All right, if you've had a shoulder dislocation, there are a couple of things that you need to master in your rehab journey of getting it right. Now, this is to do with common shoulder dislocations, so that anterior dislocations, usually they happen in this position where the ball goes anterior. And that is also the position where everyone's very vulnerable. You've probably find if you've had a shoulder dislocation before, you don't really like that position. It's usually what we call an apprehension position. And that's because you're weak usually in the front, the tissues are not as strong, and the, what we call the form closure, so the ligaments that hold the front, if they've been damaged, they're a bit weak, that ball tends to ride forward when you go in this position. And if you're tight and weak through the back, the whole thing's not so great, doesn't feel very good. So you've got to master a couple of things. One is your isometric loading of the actual joint using stability options. And two is your internal rotation, not just strength, but the basically the confidence of getting back now. So some of that is because we need some external rotation strength. We're not going to go through the external rotation today. That's in another video. The two things we're going to go through today is isometric loading and internal rotation. Now, the isometric loading, first what I'd work on is using something like this to create the stability option. So like I said, this is in your rehab journey. It's one of those things you have to master. It's not the first thing you're gonna do, it's not the last thing you're gonna do. You may find in your rehab program there are many things you're doing as far as trying to learn how to load through your shoulder again. But once you've got, say, a scapular press worked out where you're being able to protract, retract under your own body weight load, you need to add a ball with this. And the reason for that is it's gonna simulate a little bit more rotator cuff activity to hold the ball in the socket. Remember, if you've damaged some of the ligaments in your shoulder, remember the shoulder is made up of a lot of sort of ligament stability and muscle stability rather than bone stability, so that's why it's quite sloppy. If you've damaged that, you've compromised it, you have to make up for it with more muscle control because you don't have as much ligament control, if you like. So we want exercises to stimulate sort of the wrapping around of the rotator cuff on the ball to hold it still while you're doing exercises. So this provides that instability type feeling to, for you to gain stability in a press movement. Because hey, that's when you're gonna be vulnerable doing this sort of thing and this sort of thing. You don't want that being unstable. So what you do is you go into your four point press and you try and weight bear on that ball to start with, okay? So you've gotta have the confidence that you're not gonna slip off Okay, so you gotta do this with a reasonably flat Pilates ball like this, so you don't want it fully pumped up, you want it a little bit squishy like that. And you've got to be able to have, one, the wrist flexibility to do this, but you've gotta be able to hold like that and then slowly take this hand off, okay? Now you can see, even with me, with non dislocated shoulder, I'm moving a little bit. You can see I'm sort of struggling a little bit here because the ball was challenging my stability. But I've got enough strength to hold there. I can just hold there all day. But there's still some feedback going on about wobbliness, which is really helping me control from brain to shoulder about getting those muscles switching on and holding that ball nice and stable. Once you've got that, you need to work on movement in that position. Okay. Now I don't mean elbow bend. Okay. What I mean is shoulder movement. What I want you to do is go into retraction of the shoulder blade and then push away. Now the pushing away part is the hard part because as I push away, I'm pushing the sort of the, the ball of the socket further away from my body here, okay? So it gets more and more vulnerable out there. So you'll find that this part is not too bad. The posterior dislocation people may not like that part, but the anterior people will probably find that that's okay. It's the pushing away is when they start getting quite weak in this position, they start getting worried. So. You need to start this off by just going gently through retraction and protraction and making sure you can control that ball. You'll find it quite fatiguing, quite hard, probably a little bit hard on the wrist, but it does wonders for you to get that confidence to load through that joint. So that's your first stability option. You've got to tick that one off the list. The second one I want you to do is using a Swiss ball. Now, this one creates a lot more instability, but we're going to do it standing up. So with this one, I'll show you my right shoulder. What you're gonna try and do is draw circles with this. So if you imagine, if this is my sock and my ball, I'm sort of doing this movement. So I want the rotator cuff controlling that, all right? I've just gotta be careful that I'm not gonna sort of go outside my boundaries with this. I wanna load onto it. So it's a similar thing like with a small Pilates ball, but when I load onto it, I don't wanna be sitting in retraction. I want, actually wanna be in full protraction. Now I've gotta be, once I'm like that, I've got to be sort of away, so I'm still weight bearing on it. 
but I'm pushed away from it, if that makes sense. So I'm pushing away from the ball, but I'm still leaning on the ball. Then what I've got to try and do is draw the smallest of little circles and staying away from any pain or instability feeling and feeling like I'm going to fall with that. So you've got to be very careful with this one. But as I get more confident, I'm going to try and draw bigger circles with my hand. And I might just sort of go sort of clockwise, and then you go anti-clockwise, and you just keep repeating that until you've done about a set of 10 clockwise and anti-clockwise. Be sure they're not just sitting there doing this sort of thing, okay? You've got to be load-bearing on it, so you're, if in effect, committed to the ball, okay? So you have to use muscles here to control the force that's going through here. If I just do this, I don't have to do much, all right? Leaning on it is the key, so you've really got to get that pushed away feeling, protracted through, and then rolling a big circle around. And this is going to give you a lot of confidence, but also just a lot of repeat learning and feedback of those muscles. Because, hey, when you have a dislocation, a lot of that control mechanism gets sort of shut off a little bit, and you start losing some confidence with your shoulder. This will bring, help bring it all back. But again, it's only, you know, those are just two exercises you need to work on with stability, but essential ones to nail in that rehab program. The other thing is internal rotation. Now, this sort of goes into a, a vulnerable, vulnerable position for most people. You need a weight with this one. So I suggest if you're a little bit weak, and remember, this is not fresh out of dislocation. This is down the track when you're sort of trying to sort of go into the gym and start returning to weights, and you're trying to get your stability and control a little bit better and your strength. You might even start off with a one kilo, okay? I'm gonna show you the two kilo today. Depends on how strong you are, depends how bad your dislocation has been, but some people even have to go down to like 0.5, which is like a baked bean can with this, just because they feel a bit weak. Now, with this one, you're gonna start off with what we call a 45 degree internal rotation. 45 degree meaning my arm is not at zero degrees abduction, it's not at 90 degrees abduction, it's at 45 degrees abduction, all right? Now, what you can do to start with, if you're just focusing on internal rotation strength, okay? You're not worried about stability or anything like that. You're just gonna focus on this movement. But what I want you to try and do is combine your internal rotation with a bit of stability. You're trying to get the whole brain working out, how do I control my shoulder again? So I would lift that elbow off the ground and keep it there. And what you've got to try and do is keep that elbow on the 45 degree angle out from the shoulder, 90 degrees at the elbow joint and stay in one spot. So when I go into external rotation, which is the eccentric part of your internal rotation, you've got to go back to the point where you go, yeah, I don't like going any further, and then bring it back to neutral again. Okay, so as you get stronger, more confident, more coordinated, you can go back further and further. And this is really good training for you to get the strengthening out there that you've up till now probably totally avoided, right? So this is where people go, oh, I don't want to go out there. That's going to dislocate my shoulder. But if you don't go to that point, okay, and stay in the realm of safety, then you'll never get stronger out there. So at some point, you've got to sort of bite the bullet and be careful because you don't want to go out and dislocate it again. But you've got to go back to the point where you know where your strength is. You can hold it there isometrically. It's not going to pop out. And then bring it back. As the weeks go on, you're going to aim to go further and further and further out to your end range, okay? So the point where your muscles are doing the closure, we call it force closure, where your muscles are making up for the fact that your ligaments aren't so great, and your instability's a bit there, you know, your stability's not so great, and they are making up for that stability loss, and that will give you your stability back. So you may get to the point where like, you can hang there because your meter rotators and your pec are holding you there. It's keeping it from dislocating. And coming back. Like I said, you'll need to do external rotation strengthening with this, but today I'm just showing you internal rotation. One. We're, we're moving into external rotation, but the strengthening is internal rotation. Now, once you've nailed the 45, you have to go to the old 90, which is probably the one you absolutely hate, and that's because that is your apprehension dislocation position, all right? And people probably go, oh, there's no way I can get back there. You've got to start somewhere. So you start maybe 10 degrees and come back. Okay, as you get more confident as the weeks go on, you go to 20, you go to 30, maybe you go to 45. So you go into 45 degrees at 90, coming back. Always keep your elbow off the ground, right? And then you're going all the way back 
maybe you're getting to 70, maybe you're getting 80. Fine with that vulnerable point. Now, some people, you'll probably find it, the non dislocated shoulders like, wee, okay, that's fine. And they never get back the full movement here. They might get back and say, oh, there, and it feels like it's going to pop out of joint. Well, that's as far as you go. And you keep going there until you basically, it doesn't improve, and then you may seek some more sort of advice on what to do about that. But in the rehab journey, your aim is to get as far as you possibly can with, you know, and improve how much rotation you can get out of there because that's going to get you closer and closer back to normal activities and sportness and the things you want to do. Um, give you the confidence and stop it dislocating as much. It won't fully stop dislocations in some people. Okay, Some people have you know, a lot of damage to the shoulder and they may need a surgical opinion, but if you're one of those people who's been the surgeon or been the physio and you don't need a surgical option for it, or you need a strength thing to stabilize it, then these ones are the ones you have to take off the list. Of course, like I said, lots of other exercises to do. These are the ones you have to do. All right, see you next time.